I started my morning with some regular street driving, navigating average city streets. The car seemed to handle it pretty well, although I myself was rather hesitant. The sensation is very, very strange. However, only 10 minutes in, the car gave me a strike and kicked me out of the full self-driving. You see, you have to touch the wheel when the car tells you to in order to let it know that you're still awake. However, just touching it sometimes isn't enough. You have to shake it, which in turn shakes the car. I guess I didn't do it hard enough and it thought I wasn't paying attention, so I got a strike. Great start to the morning. After some time gathering camera equipment, I went back out on the road. This was more city driving and it handled merging for parked cars and construction cones pretty well. However, it did later on believe that a car in the oncoming turn lane was trying to kill us. So it dramatically slowed down and in fear of getting rear ended, I had to hit the gas. This earned me my second strike, of which if I got a third, it would remove me from the beta completely. That, I believe, was a BS reason for giving me a strike. I was actually protecting the car when it messed up, and yet it penalized me. I will say the sign detection system is pretty good for stoplights and road signs, even when driving straight towards the sun. Next up was the highway. This is where the system really comes into its own. City driving and highway driving use two separate systems, and you could see the crossover here on the on-ramp. The highway system is much more refined since it's been out on the market for much, much longer. It did try to merge uncomfortably close to a truck, but otherwise the highway is a breeze and it asks you to touch the wheel far less. After all this, I'm left with many feelings. First of all, I don't believe full self-driving is ready for public use. You see, before we started filming, the owner was showing me how to use the FSD. We came up to a red light in the right turn lane. As a car was approaching, the Tesla decided now was the time to turn right on red. If it wasn't for the owner taking over and flooring it, there would have been a collision. Not cool. The best way I can describe it is that the car drives like an eight-year-old would drive it. At first, it's super neat. You say, hey, look, it's actually doing it. You take pictures, you post on Facebook, hey, look, my car's driving itself. It's cute, it's fun. But then comes the reality that it's still an eight-year-old kid and doesn't have the reasoning or life skills to understand that someone might pull out into traffic randomly or that a ball might fly into the road. I also don't like that you have to touch the steering wheel to remind the car that you're awake. Now, I understand 100% why they have to do this. It's a safety thing and I completely agree with the reasoning. However, in practice, not so much. And the reasons are as follows. Number one, sometimes it doesn't register and I found myself tugging on the steering wheel rather suddenly. It felt as though I was trying to hijack my own car just to keep it moving in a straight line. A way around this is to just spin one of the knobs on the steering wheel. This is what I ended up doing for 99% of the rest of my drive. The second reason I don't like it is because if you pull too hard, not only do you turn off the full self-driving, but your car swerves in real life. If you don't touch it when it prompts you, it punishes you. So it's really a lose-lose situation. And the third reason I hate the steering wheel touch requirement is that I found myself staring at the gauge cluster screen more than the road in anticipation for the message to appear to touch the steering wheel. The message itself is rather subtle and it only alerts you when you've lost your privileges. So if you want me to be an alert driver, which is the whole point of it, shouldn't my eyes be out on the road and not focused on the little screen in front of me? All in all, I'm very happy to see Tesla pushing new technology forward. What they've done for EVs as a technology technology can't go without thanks. But as it stands, FSD is not ready for the road and it puts lives in danger. After all of this, I find myself thinking about that minivan that the Tesla pulled out in front of. That lady didn't sign up to be a part of the Tesla self-driving beta test. She was just going about her day and could have easily been injured or worse. It's not fair to other motorists. I have a lot of faith in the future of this technology, but a half-cooked chicken will still make you sick.